Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. Fernando. Welcome to the show. Today we have, well, I don't even know how to describe what we have today other than, yo, bro, just make this thing loud, dog. I want my ears to be bleeding when I'm done. That's right, SPL time. In a Toyota Tundra. In a Toyota Tacoma. Let's just get to the intro and I'll see you on the other side. So we had done a F-150 for the person, I know, right? For the person that owns this car previously, it was one of Fernando's customers. At the time, he was like, I want a really nice sounding system. I want it to sound good, crisp, clear. So that's what we gave him. Beautiful system, focals, the whole nine yards. And, and he was like, it's not loud enough. Right. Right. Wait, wait a minute. You said you wanted it one way, and now you want it another. Well, right. so there was some confusion there. This time, you got a new car. He's like, no confusion. I want my ears to bleed. Exactly. Fernando put them together a system. Do just that. I bet you guys are dying to know what it is. So let's dig right into it. Take a look at the equipment we're going to be putting in it. First up, we're going to be going with some Hertz SPL Show 6x9s. We talk about these things a lot. These things are super duper loud. It's got a neo magnet. We'll take a closer look at it once we get to pulling the factory speakers out. They make a matching six and a half inch coaxial. For the command center, we're going to be going with this big boy here, 10 inches of fun. The DNR 1007 XR. He wanted GPS built into the radio. This has it. Tweeters up in the dash. The ST25 Neos. This is what's going to make his ears bleed. For amplifiers to power all this and make it just like, ah, we're going to go with the D. 4.800 and the LC 1.800. We'll get to what that's gonna power in a minute. But you're going, wait a minute, why are we doing a DSP? We want it to sound good. We want to be able to EQ it. We want it loud, but we still want it to have some ability to go in there and tweak the settings and make it sound phenomenal. So we're gonna go with the DSP. For subwoofers, Fernando sold him a set of the Rockford P3 shallow mounts because it's a pickup truck. And they're gonna go into Fox box, 210 box that's gonna go behind the back seat. We know this thing's loud, we've already put it in Victor's car. Victor has the same truck and well, hey, he wanted it loud too. So we know this thing is gonna put out. So the plan now is to start getting this thing apart, start putting these pieces in, and we're gonna take you guys along on the journey. Fernando, of course, is gonna start over here on the driver's door speaker. We're gonna shoot this a little bit different. We're not gonna do a bunch of time lapse and all that fun stuff. We're gonna do what we call the one camera perspective, meaning we're gonna do some work, we're gonna show you some stuff, and it's all going to be POV, with the exception of the drop down camera, of course, because that's the POV of what we're looking at on the bench. Are you excited? excited. Let's get started. You're going to start on the driver's door? Yes, sir. I'm going to start on the dash, get that apart, and then we'll take a look at the radio and all that fun stuff. Let's just get going. Fernando, what are we doing in the door? First thing we're going to do, of course, is pop the door panel, roll kill the inside, outside, put a little bit around the plastic, fast rings, all the way around. We'll come back here in a second once he gets the door panel off and take a look at roadkill in progress. In the meantime, <laughs> let's hop over and get this radio out of the dash. Since we're in the car, let's take a little bit closer look at everything this car has from the factory. It has steering wheel controls factory USB, has factory navigation with the touchscreen, speakers up here in the dash, six by nines down here in the door, the rear door has a six and a half. There's also a nice backup camera from the factory here too. So we of course want to retain all those factory features that are built into the radio and we're going to fill all the holes where the existing speakers are because we're going to be doing super loud tweeters in the dash, coaxes in the door. Time alignment isn't on the table. Specifically he's like I don't want it time aligned, I want it loud. Not that you can't time align and make a system loud, you can you can do amazing things. He had it in his previous car and he was like, eh, I don't like it. And we're like, okay, no problem. So as we said before, time alignment is not for everybody. Some people are just used to sound coming out of that side, sound coming out of this side, just sounds like a sound grenade going on. And he likes that. We're just gonna make that sound the best that we possibly can. Get this radio out, which I do love this two-tone dash. What do you think, Fernando? Oh, I love it. I know, Honestly, it's cool. that's re and actually matches his the SPL show speakers. It does match the Hertz, so this is gonna be kinda cool. To get this out, put your hands here above this grill, knuckles on the dash, and just kind of pull and push at the same time and work your way towards the steering wheel. And then the whole piece just comes right out. Thank you. Four 10 millimeter bolts will give us access to this. It is. Dude, this is crooked. Yeah, it is? Yeah. Why? Look. 
Remember how like it, it sits flush and this one side is always in? Mm -hmm. Look, it's crooked. Look at the distance between this fans out towards the driver. Okay, so that that is made to do it's that. It's made to do to that. To actually yeah, like so the glare or the something. The kit is straight, not realizing that the factory is crooked. One of the things that we've noticed when doing these installs is that this side of the kit is always pushed in further than this side. We've never really paid attention to it until just now. We've always just fixed it. But the factory radio is actually not straight with the dash. It's shorter here and longer here. Quarter inch. Yeah. Is it a quarter inch? Yeah, it's like one and a half, one and seven eighths. Oh, a little bit more than a quarter inch. Because we always use like a quarter inch and a piece of foam and that shims it out properly. Mm -hmm. If you get your radio put in and you're like, hey, wait a minute, this side is in further, you need to shim this side. An oversight on the kit manufacturers. Remove the four tens. Pull the radio out as far as you can. Put a cloth underneath it to protect the car. Start unplugging all the plugs. And there is a bunch of them on these radios. Our USB was actually caught on a piece of metal in the dash. That's why we couldn't get the radio out that far. As far as dash cavities go, there's plenty of room inside this dash for everything you're gonna be doing. There's room down here. So this is actually an install friendly dash for sure. The next thing I wanna do while I'm in here disassembling is get this speaker out, because I'm gonna need to make brackets to house the new speaker in its place. When removing these handles, this seam is really tight. Can't tell you how many times we've been in cars and we can tell somebody's removed these. We use this. This is a metal panel tool. It's really thin here on the top. You can buy these at mobilesolutions.com and it will make your installation so much easier because they'll fit right into this gap and easily pop the panel off. Most of the bolts you'll find in this car are 10 millimeter. This is what we removed and we'll be making a mount to fit our tweeter in this location. Head over to the bench and we'll take a look at the replacement for this speaker. The factory uses a paper cone standard magnet. This clip here on the back, this is where a lot of people like, oh wow. This is a pass through. How this comes is from the radio, it comes into here and then out of here it goes into the driver's door. If you disconnect that harness and don't hook it up to anything, don't loop the wires, speakers in the door won't play. The nice thing is, is this is made to actually unclip off of here and you can desolder these wires off of it. If you're going to be running your own tweeter wires up to the dash to do let's say an active set, recommend doing that and just plug this clip back in and that will allow the sound to pass through into the door. What we're going to be replacing them with are these guys right here. We use a lot of Hertz products. If you've followed along, you know we talk about the Millie Pros a lot, which is a sound quality speaker that is very dynamic and very nice sounding if you like it loud but yet very musical this takes that to a whole nother level Inside the box, we get some grills and some mounting rings. These grills are designed to push up through the mounting ring like this, and this is threaded so it will twist on. There's two passive crossovers in the box, and then the music maker itself. Man, it's like shiny black abyss of sound. If you look at the picture, this looks like a lot of other Neo tweeters that I'm sure you've seen, but now that you actually see it up close, you can tell it's a little bit different animal. This does unscrew and it gets you the threaded top that you'll see on a lot of the bullet Neo tweeters. There's two gaskets, as well as a top fitting and a bottom fitting, and of course, the grill fitting. Basically, what that means if you have the depth, you can put this on there, and it will look just like a normal tweeter in that panel. The back of this is where it totally looks different than what most of the Neo tweeters look like. It has this heat sink style magnet back plate here. You don't have the typical two screws that this would normally have to go over. Over it. It's a really nice and well-built looking speaker for sure. And then buried in the deep of the box, we have these two grill tools. And what these are used for, is there's a little slit right here and there's one on the other side. This goes in here and you can tighten it and untighten it with this. It has rubber undercoating on it. They won't scratch the anodized top here. As far as depth compared to the factory goes, it's right about the same depth. This will fit right in there and look really nice up in that dash. I need to measure this opening here so that we can make brackets to set that in the dash. And just like that, Fernando has the door panel off. This is the speaker we are gonna replace. 
Thank you. Let's head over to the bench and see what this is and what we'll be replacing this with. A lot of people would confuse this as a six by nine. And for the most part, yeah, the inside area here is a six by nine, but you'll go out and you'll buy a six by nine and it's not gonna work. It's not gonna bolt into place because of this big plastic bracket here. We are gonna be using a six by nine, but to get that in, we're gonna use these, the Metro 828146. But let's take a closer look at the speaker. This uses a little Neo magnet here on the back. It is full plastic construction. This is usually where this fails, is this Neo magnet glued on to this speaker. We've seen these where these have broken off and they'll actually be stuck on the back side of the door. When you close the door, they'll just like fly and you'll hear a tink and then you have no more sound. It uses a cloth surround and a paper treated cone. Replacing it, the SPL Show SX690 Neos. They do a wonderful job on packaging. They come with grills over the top of them so that you don't destroy the tweeter array. This is what you call a three-way. Why is it a three-way? Because there's three speakers inside of here. You have the big mid-bass here, a smaller, higher frequency tweeter, and then a bigger, lower frequency tweeter. These two tweeters will come together and make a beautiful sounding, super loud tweeter array. You flip it over and you see this little tiny magnet on the back. It's a neo-magnet, which is the name. Over here on the end, this wire coming out to the tweeter. That means if you wanted to, you could buy amp these by simply cutting the wire here, soldering on a new connector, and you could run these active tweeter and mid bass. We won't be doing that on this install, but you can. Fiber pulp treated cone, a rubber surround. These are cloth dome tweeters. Looking at the two, yeah, we're definitely doing an upgrade here. Depth wise, this is going to be deeper. A closer look at the bracket we are gonna be using compared to the factory speaker. It is a universal, meaning it is made to work in more than one Toyota, but what we wanna look at is the whole pattern to make sure we have it, and also this lip here at the top. This has a lip. When it goes onto the door, it covers the same whole area. We recommend putting foam on the back of this. Even if you are gonna be doing sound treatment, you don't want this to come loose or rattle. From the factory, they put a nice bead of foam on it. And then they put foam here on the front, which we will accomplish using our fast ring. The purpose of this is to couple with the door panel so that all that energy comes out into the door. If we were to just put our speaker into our bracket like this, mount this into the door, the sound will go everywhere. It won't be focused out the door panel, adding that foam ring, it will help push that sound through the door panel, getting all this beautiful sound into the car. And as we can see, this is what it'll look like mounted in its bracket. Another bit of foam you'll want to do is on the back side of the speaker here so that it does not rattle against the plastic or so that water or any other thing like that can get through into the car. 